everyone, welcome to this video on how to stop learning and start hacking. Now what you may notice is that my videos usually go up on a Saturday and it's a Wednesday. Um, I'm moving my videos to be on the weekdays rather than on the weekends um, because I know a lot of people stream on the weekends and I really know that people kind of have to make a decision whether or not to watch my videos or to watch a stream and streams, the VODs, don't give you the same experience so I really wanted to make sure that you folks would be able to um, do both essentially. So I've moved my videos to a Wednesday, hopefully that's a better schedule for people, we'll see. Um, so in this video we're going to talk about how to transition from learning to hacking. Um, a lot of people tell me they kind of get stuck in learning and they don't really know how to start hacking, we're talking about this today. Um, and again this video is very kindly sponsored by Integrity, um, they've sponsored a ton of my videos now but if you haven't heard of them, they're a bug bounty platform just like HackerOne and BugCrowd. They're smaller and focus on European customers, uh, although you don't need to be European to hack on them. They're huge supporters of the bug bounty community, sponsoring not just my content but also a bunch of other creators. Um, and I'm really happy to work with them. I know a lot of you folks have already signed up and some of you have even found your first bug or are finding more bugs on the platform or participating in XSS challenges and I'm so happy for you all. If you want to sign up you can use my link um, that's go.integrity.com forward slash Katie. It's on screen now, it will also be in the video description. Um, and yeah, so let's get on with the rest of the video. Now what is the problem I'm talking about? So I get this question a lot. Now good here on my discord, again if you want to join my discord channel that's in the description, um, says that I like learning way too much, so much so that I haven't spent even a week on bug bounty. Um, and I tried very hard but couldn't find bug even after acing my OSCP. Now good, good knows what they are doing, like that is so 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 good, like that are not they're not bad at security, they're really good at security, they've got an OSCP, I don't have an OSCP. But the problem is that there's a gap between when you learn and when you actually start hacking. Um, and here's my advice to him was, you know, even CTS can mean you kind of get stuck when it comes to real target. And even if you don't find anything, just looking at how burp works and focusing on not getting overwhelmed is a skill you've got to learn. But I really wanted to expand on that answer and really give not just good but other people in the same position that's like some advice to deal with this. Now let's talk about the gap. We often think about learning and hacking in this way where we kind of have this gap of knowledge. Now you are learning and then you just take this jump over the gap and then you become a hacker and then you start hacking. And the opinion kind of is that when we learn um, the gap becomes smaller, like we are more prepared and the hacking, um, like we'll close the gap, we know a lot, done. But the problem tends to be that it makes it further away. When we spend too much time learning, we get really good at learning, but we don't necessarily know how to apply what we've learned to re a real target. Like there are people who are very, very, very good at CTFs, but can't find bugs. Um, and that makes it really hard to transition to a real target. It increases the gap which often makes us feel like we don't know enough, so we keep on learning, which makes the problem worse, and we just go round and round, really struggling to make that transition. And I want to make something very clear, learning is really important. You can't start hacking when you know nothing, but it's also really important to recognise where it fails and figure out what you need to learn and prioritise that. So when we get stuck, we're not stuck learning, but we're stuck actually hacking something, and that's a much better position to be in. I mean, top hackers, they are always learning, but they learn in a very different way to how a beginner might learn, and I think it's really important to highlight that and to really talk about that. Because when beginners learn, they experience something called diminishing returns, and sometimes that means learning resources aren't necessarily the best way to learn. Now, what do I really mean by that? So there's a few different ways that learning resources can be really bad for learning how to hack. Um, and the first one here is that bugs are really dependent on context. When you play with a CTF or you read a write-up, you're often teaching you about one bug or maybe a chain of bugs in one context. But you know, when you become a hacker and you start doing bug bounties, you'll see so many different web apps or mobile apps with so many different technologies. You'll see JavaScript frameworks, you'll see 
different web backends. You'll see, you know, Angular versus uh, React versus whatever the latest JavaScript framework is. And it's always better to learn the root causes of these issues um, rather than just think about them in one specific context. And you're actually really unlikely to see the same context as somebody else when you deal with a different target on a different framework. Um, maybe if you're dealing with the same target, then you're more likely to come across it. But actually, it can be so specific that even if you read a write-up, you don't actually take in that knowledge and learn from it because it's so like so dependent on the context. Um, and also, when people write up um, bugs, they tend to be more complex bugs. Um, they write up kind of the interesting bugs and CTF levels with really complex solutions. Your first bug is just not going to be complex. Your first bug is not going to be a CTF level. It's going to be a simple XSS, a simple IDOR, simple business logic, simple information disclosure with really simple payloads. Often when someone writes up a bug, they kind of go through these three stages of perimeter exploitation, privilege hijacking and escalation and then lateral mo movement and exfiltration so they're first figuring out you know what they can attack then they're looking at how they can get their privileges escalated and they're looking at what else they can attack and you end up with these bug chains but for your first bug it's just not going to be that complex it's going to be so simple um and what people really forget when they do a lot of like learning is that there are these core bugs that are simple for beginners to get. Um, and really that kind of leads on to the next topic, which is applying your knowledge. If you never apply what you learn, you're going to forget it. And learning really takes these like five stages. The first is discovery. It's discovering a bug exists and how to exploit it. The next is to link it to what you already know. So a good example of this might be if you know how an XSS works, you might then look at a blind XSS and link the two together, like because they're, your knowledge is linked, right? You then practice it. You might do a CTF level. You might um, practice on a real target. You want to look at that bug in context of a web application, for example. You then reflect on it. What worked? What didn't work? And you apply it. You don't just sit there and get stuck at that kind of practice level or even the just discovery level, you've got to go through these like discover, link, practice, reflect, apply. And the really important thing is to apply because even if you read a relevant write up, if you're not working on uh, applying it and practicing it, you just won't remember it. And then what's the point of even reading that in the first place? Um, and the other thing here is that some problems end up being CTF only. This was an interesting Twitter exchange um, with Nafi talking about a bug that really none of them had seen in the real world. And these are top hunters. Um, and some of the kind of bugs might just be for CTS because they're interesting in that context. But in the real world, the, like, the conditions just never meet up. Like we were talking about context. Um, some bugs only exist in these really specific conditions. If the conditions are so specific, a real um, exploit just might not be possible. Uh, and some people also give false bug bounty tips on Twitter. So even if you're reading this, even if you are um, really looking at resources and write-ups and bug bounty tips, people might just be lying. Uh, and so even if you are learning and you are taking advantage, it might be completely useless when you actually come to apply it. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, Katie, but how do I actually transition? Like, I have this problem. What on earth should I do? How can I fix it? What, what should be my goal next? And the first thing I'd say is start hunting now. Don't start hunting tomorrow. Don't tell yourself you're going to start in the future. All you need to know how to do is to learn burp and to know the basic bugs. If you've watched more than one of my videos, I can almost assure you you're ready to start hunting. My first bug, I'd been using burp for about an hour when I found my first bug. I'm not that smart, okay? You can do it, you just need to start and you just need to get into a position where you're not just learning, you're actually trying. And you know what? You might fail, you totally might fail. But the important thing is, is you tried and you will learn so much in your first like hour of bug hunting than you will learn by reading write-ups for an hour. 
So my first piece of advice is to just do it. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Start now. Um, and the next one is focus on simple vulnerabilities. It can be really tempting to think about, oh, I need to get an RCE or a, a, a critical bug or a high bug. No, just focus on the simple ones. Your first bug is probably going to be a low, a medium if you're lucky. It's not going to be really complex. Just focus on the simple ones. You'll get there. Like, you'll totally get to having critical bugs. You've just got to build up your knowledge and build up your experience over time. And that kind of leads to what I'm saying now, which is leave your comfort zone. Like, your comfort zone at the moment is probably reading write-ups and watching my videos. You feel safe, you feel like you understand it. But actually, if you want to grow, if you want to deal with real targets, you've got to get over the comfort zone. You've got to go past the fear zone into the learning and growth zone. Because if you want to be successful in bug bounties, you've got to actually hunt for bugs. And it's important to leave your comfort zone when you can. Um, and the other thing is really focus on practical skills. Now, theory is great. And theory and practice go together. Like, they kind of form this tree of linked ideas. You can't just have one without the other. But that also means you can't just have theory without practice. And you can't have practice without theory. And if you want to learn, you need to have both. So when you read a write-up or you work on a bug, make sure you're practicing it. Make sure you're focusing on how you can apply it and linking that knowledge to what you already know. And bug bounties are hard. Bug bounties are not an easy thing to do. The problem is if you want to be successful, you need to put in the effort. And sometimes that effort means you don't find any bugs. And that's really, really, really normal. Pro bug hunters get it all the time they don't find bugs. They might be working on something for hours and weeks and they still might not find anything. And that's the thing, right? You can't be scared of not finding a bug. You can't be scared of not finding a dupe. You have to try anyway. And you'll find that. Like, you'll do it. And bug bounties, you know, there are some bugs that you'll get very, very quickly. And some bugs that will take you weeks. And sometimes you might not find anything. Bug bounties are hard. And I just want to let you know <laughs> that it's hard, but it's worth it. Um, so let's talk about practical advice here. What bug should you start with? Now, I posted this kind of fun uh, post on Twitter, not actually related to this video. I was just uh, thinking about some of the bugs I'd recently got, uh, which was a really non-complex bug. It was a super simple bug. Um, and I wanted to know what other people had found. Um, my favourite one, by the way, was somebody who'd found a bug where a vacuum cleaner would delete the data for some reason off of a hard drive really interesting but there are some great contributions there for non-complex bugs um but some of my favorites are the idor just change an id business logic changing prices or quantities to negatives information disclosure using that recon or just exploring an application and looking for where it returns too much data a csrf it's a more technical bug but it can be a really great one to start with now these are like four bugs which I think any beginner can get. Not even XSS. I'm not even recommending XSS. These are so much easier. Um, and really the next question is, okay, those are the bugs. Watch the hack. Literally anything. You don't need to overthink choosing your target. Um, a good thing to focus on, though, is something with a high level of user interaction because that means when you first start out, you've got plenty of places you can look. Something with kind of a medium level scope, you want to be able to keep all the core functionality in mind and something you actually want to hack. And I've got quite a lot of advice in this video choosing your target um, if you want more advice. But honestly, it doesn't matter too much. Just hack something. Even if you go for like a big program and you think, oh, I'm never going to find anything because it's public program and everyone hacks on it. No. Don't think that. My first bug was on Uber. My second and third bug was on Verizon. There are so much, so many places you can find bugs. And I want to just end on this, which is the most important thing. Don't tell yourself you'll hack tomorrow or the day after. Don't put it up off until you're ready. You'll never be 100% ready. 
don't try and learn everything you think you need to learn. There's no critical mass of knowledge about hacking you need to learn before you start bug bounties. Hack today. I'm telling you right now, open burp, go on to Yahoo and just start hacking. Don't think about duplicates, don't think about, oh, I won't find anything. Just start because it's the most powerful thing you can do is start. And if you do find a if you do find a duplicate, they're bugs too. If you found a dupe, you found a bug. You just weren't quick enough. And that's fine because you know what? The next time you will be quick enough. You will be able to get it. So thank you very much for listening. Um, I hope this has been useful for you and made you think. Um, and really, I hope you can use this and use this energy to go out and start hacking on something. I want to thank again Integrity for sponsoring my content. I really don't take having an advertiser lightly on my channel. I really do think they do amazing things for the community and it has allowed me to make serious investments in my YouTube channel. My audio sounds way better now. Um, and I can actually edit videos as well and really make my videos better. Um, they really do interact with the community. They're always replying to hackers and dealing with problems that hackers have. So do give them a lot of love. You can sign up with my link, go.integrity.com forward slash Katie. Um, you can click on, see the link on screen, click on the link in the description. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you all next week. Thank you. Bye.